Today I'm going to be looking at this compound inequality where we have 4 times x minus 2 is less than 12 or negative 2 times x minus 1 is greater than 4. So we have the word or present and we have to know what the differences are between or and and. Like what does that mean in terms of our solution? So in or we want one or the other or. So one as long as it fits into one part of the solution then it's fine where the word and we want that overlapping well, here, or it's just any part of the solution can be a potential solution. So let's go ahead and just solve both of these inequalities. And when we're solving inequalities, what we want to do is we want to just solve it like we would an equation. So I'm going to just pretty much take both statements separately, solve them, and then we'll talk about what to do from there. So I'm going to solve this first one. I'm going to distribute the 4 into here. I'm going to have 4x minus 8 is less than 12. I'm going to do one at a time. Then from here, we want to add 8 to both sides. So we get 4x is less than 20, right? 12 plus 8 is 20. And then we just divide by 4. So we get x is less than 5. So we can, let's, let's hold off right now, and then we'll go to the second one, and then we'll regroup from there. So now I'm going to solve this one. I'm going to distribute the negative 2 into the parentheses, distributive property. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2, greater than 4. I'm going to solve for x by subtracting 2 from here. So I'm left with negative 2x greater than 4 minus 2 is 2. So this next step, we have to be careful. I have negative 2x greater than 2. I have to solve for x by dividing by negative 2. Now, one thing you do want to keep in mind when you're dividing by a negative is flipping this inequality because we're dividing by a negative. Whenever we're multiplying or dividing by a negative across an inequality, you got to flip it. Where here, going back to the previous step here, I wasn't dividing or multiplying by a negative. I was subtracting two across, but that's okay. We don't have to change the inequality for that. But when it's division or multiplication, then we got to make sure we do. So here I am dividing by negative two. So this is going to become x is less than, so it was greater than, so it flips to less than. Two divided by negative two is negative one. So x is less than negative one. Let's check out our potential solutions on a number line. So it's down a little bit. So I'm going to create a number line. And we have negative 1 right here, and we have 5 here. And in the solution set for negative, uh, let's do 5 first, I guess. For negative 5, I'm going to do this one in red. For x is less than 5, it says all the values of x strictly less than 5. So I'm going to put an open circle on 5, because I do not want to include 5, because it says strictly less than 5. And I'm going to highlight out to the left. I guess I'll be cool and actually use a highlighter color here. Let me do that color. Okay, so I'm gonna go out this way. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna go out this way. X is less than five. All right, and then x is less than negative 1. I'll do that in blue, I guess. x is less than negative 1. So we want all the values that are less than negative 1. x is less than negative 1. So I'm going to highlight out to the left for all the values less than negative 1. And I'm going to draw an open circle there. So it's strictly less than negative 1. So now we're talking about our potential solutions. All right, so it says the word or. So it means one or the other. So we want any sort of potential solution zone to be in our interval notation. So as we could see here, this is going, both of them are going out towards negative infinity. So my interval is gonna start at negative, inf negative infinity. And where is it gonna go? Well, if I go up to negative one, I still have more solutions all the way through 5. So my interval is going to go from negative infinity to 5 because it could fall into 
this part, my a potential X value could fall into here and make a true statement for one or the other. A potential X value can fall into this only red highlighted zone and make a true statement for one of the inequalities. So we have to keep in mind when we're talking about the word or, we have the word or, it could be one or the other. If the word, it was the word and, we would only go up to negative one with a parentheses though. Uh, we would only go up to there because it has to make both of them true. Or can be one or the other. So the only solutions, or I shouldn't say the only solutions, but the solutions are going to fall in this interval from negative infinity all the way through positive five. Because it's anywhere that's highlighted. And if the line just kept going, let's say we had x is greater than five or something like, or x is greater than negative one, or just something where the whole line is highlighted, then negative infinity to positive infinity. Any number could be a solution, but we have to stop right here because it says x is less than five. So it's all the values less than five. So that's our interval notation. That's our, sometimes the problem will ask for like graph it. That's usually what they're referring to is graphing just on a number line to see the visual of that. Um, but that's about all we can really do. And you could even take some test values if you want to be extremely ambitious and plug in some x values into the inequalities to see if that actually works out and then that's a way to check your work but that's uh that's how you go about taking care of that problem so hope this helps you